Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest policy proposal from Rishi Sunak, which takes the form of re-education camps for political dissenters. That's nice. Seriously, that, that's the policy from the leadership candidate considered to be the sane one. And you have to wonder if the fact that this policy can even be published in seriousness in a national newspaper means that we may actually be further down the road on preparations for full-blown fascism than first thought. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So I get that Rishi Sunak is desperate to get back into the leadership contest. I've already said that I expect him to make increasingly extreme policy promises until he feels he's back in it. In fact, so desperate is he, he might not even stop then. He started out trying to distinguish himself from trust by being the grown-up in the room, the one who wouldn't make impossible promises. It's like he's seen this isn't going to work and he's not, and he's now trying to out crazy the crazy one, basically. The opening line of the article in the Daily Telegraph, which reports on Sunak's latest gambit, is that people who vilify Britain will be treated as extremists and referred to the prevent de-radicalization the de-radicalisation programme. Now, even taking this at face value, this is not something you see in the Western world anywhere. Like even in the United States where lax gun laws means you actually need to be a little bit careful, I think, in some areas of your political views, there's no state control over the level of criticism you can make of the country. If someone criticises their country, no matter how strongly, the other side of the partisan political debate uh, will just denounce them as un-American and that's that. The article is quick to point out that this scheme would not be used for those who criticise the government or any government policy, nor would it be legally binding. Whew, I was worried there for a minute, but hang on a minute, let's examine this a little bit before I pick on some other features of the report. First, the fact that a candidate to become head of government can even propose the idea of re-education for people who vilify Britain and it not be a massive PR disaster concerns me. I talked earlier on about how Liz Truss yesterday tried to talk about cutting the pay of new teachers, nurses, other public sector workers and the policy was shot down immediately by her own MPs to the point where she said no no I never said that at all. It's like you wrote it down and published it Liz. No 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 no. This policy proposal has not been shot down or even strongly criticised within the Conservative Party. Does that mean that Conservatives, and maybe even the general public, are less bothered by the concept of re-education for people who criticise the country than for public sector pay policies? And even if they were, the fact that it's barely made a ripple makes you wonder just how little people care about what we're becoming. Then the second point about it not applying to either the government or government policy. Well, I mean, we know that governments with fascist tendencies tend to conflate themselves with the country. In fact, Boris Johnson, Michael Gove, Dominic Raab, other ministers as well, have all gone so far as to accuse those of criticising the government of running the country down. That's what they say when in actual fact they're criticising the government or government policy. You're running the country down. You're anti-British. To the Tories, there is no difference between criticism of them and of the country. I suppose it's because of their sense of ownership. Because when people criticise a country, what they're actually criticising is government policy in almost all cases. Like when we criticise Russia, we don't really mean Russia or its people, you know, who will be as nice and nasty as people in any country because of their people. We're criticising the Russian government or Russian government policy. So if this policy ever saw the light of day, of course it would be used to target those criticising the government then the assertion about it not being legally binding. So he's saying he intends to change the guidance for the PREVENT programme. OK, but things can change, can't they? Let us imagine that he wins the leadership contest. This policy is popular enough amongst Tories that he is pressured into prioritising it. After all, it wouldn't take legislation to get the ball rolling, just changing guidelines. Let's say the government find it useful in stoking their culture wars, but the scheme is deemed to lack teeth. It's not really working, is it? Well, then at that point, in comes your legislation 
and it's legally binding all of a sudden. Fascism never happens overnight, it's always in stages, one human rights abuse at a time. Sunak is also reported to have said he will focus the Prevent programme more onto Islamic extremism. Now, I was a college teacher when Prevent came into being. We had all the, the talks, we had the police come in and explain it all to us. We were told that the scheme was designed to address whatever were the most prevalent forms of extremism in that particular area where I was working, not uncommon for the whole country, in fact, it's not Islamic extremism at all. It's white supremacists. So the focus in that our area, and indeed, as I say, most of the country, is on that. The police in a region know what forms of extremism are triggering acts of public disorder and violence. Being told by the government to increase the prioritisation of a specific form of extremism that may be no big deal in particular areas means you do two things. First of all, you are missing the genuinely concerning forms, including right-wing xenophobic or similar attacks. You know, though this is much less serious an issue than you might imagine, because basically the DRAC... I can't use that word. The de-radicalisation programmes don't work anyway. So I suppose mis, misfiring with them doesn't really matter. It, it's like tougher sentences. You know, they talk about, oh, we'll introduce tougher sentences. It's like the government threw something together to make it look like they're doing something. It doesn't do anything. And because Tories are lazy, they always choose the easiest option, not the one that actually works. Second, you are applying the scheme out of proportion against, in this case, Muslim communities, creating mistrust of the authorities. Now, this is much more serious. The bottom line is that far-right extremism is simply a greater threat in the UK. White supremacists are a greater threat in the UK. There are more attacks from these people and more lives ruined by these people. In fact, we've had two MPs murdered in recent years and both were by far-right extremists. And just to drive the point home, I'll put a little link below, another MP has just um, published a letter today explaining how they were being potentially threatened by someone you know, who was talking darkly about killing them. The police obviously investigated. They were thanking the various people for bringing it to the attention of the police. You know, and again, who is this? It's a white fella. You know, this is an absolutely steaming turd of a policy idea, the very definition of a red meat policy proposal. And I'd like to think Sunak is just throwing it out there as part of his desperation. Here's the thing. These extreme policies he's throwing out there are intended to find approval. And if they do, then that suggests there will be those who want to see them become reality. Oh, good idea. We should do that. No matter who wins. Even if Trust wins, if Tories like the sound of some, some of uh, Sunak's policies, don't imagine that Sunak's policies die with him. If, if Trust wins, they may expect her to proceed with them. Well, a good idea is a good idea, Liz. And the double think is terrifying. A quote from this article. Britain is a beacon of freedom, tolerance and diversity. Used to be. Or at least by the standards of a lot of European countries. Yeah, we had a reputation for all of these things. Not anymore. And this latest policy seeks to crush freedom, tolerance and diversity. I mean, someone needs to ask Sunak what he, what he means in specific terms about these three words. And finally, there was a line later on in the report where the Telegraph sought to justify this, but by saying the quiet part, part loud again. They used an example of someone who successfully sued the government for a breach of their human rights. It reported Sunak as saying the Bill of Rights would prevent this. No pun intended. So coming straight out and saying it, the Bill of Rights is designed to actually remove our human rights. They've just said it right there. So I find myself having to say this again. For all those who know that the Tories are dangerous, if you don't know the dangers, I'm not, there's not much I can do at this point. But if you do know, you're aware of that, really need to stop arguing about relatively minor points of policy. I've been very worried about this country since 2019. It's been a bad time since 2015, really. But 2019 is really what we got me worried about how quickly things could get out of hand. It may be that it's already too late for the country at large. That is the UK. I don't know. But I shudder to think of what the Tories could do if they won the next election. They will certainly present an even more extreme manifesto than Johnson. They have to, because a lot of the atrocities he promised to inflict have been achieved with a few extra thrown in. They have to be stopped and they need to be stopped and hard. 
That means really focusing on the general election, not letting good be the enemy of great and voting the real enemy out. Then keeping them out until they've decided to rejoin the human race. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.